Okay, I wanted to talk about LCR meters. Um, I think you've seen this used in some of my videos, but I've never really talked about the meter itself. Uh, this is a Unity UT61612. A bunch of companies make things very, very similar to this, and I, they probably all have about the same accuracy. It, it, there's no, no magic in them other than software. So let's, let's kind of dive in and see exactly how a machine like this works. And you'll find that it's actually quite similar to the Nano VNA, believe it or not. So let's start with a, uh, a simple circuit here. Um, let me zoom in on that. Okay, so we have a capacitor and a resistor, and we are going to measure it. So we're going to first put a signal on it. We want to measure AC. So we're going to put a function generator across uh, these two leads. Okay, so now we have a function generator. And again, we have a 1K resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And we are going to measure two things. We're going to measure the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the resistor. So we're going to take our blue scope probe and we are going to ground it in the center. We're going to measure the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, so that'll be... Um, okay, so I'm probably my scope probe. So we have one, uh, the blue blue scope probe is looking at the voltage across the capacitor and we have the yellow probe uh, going to be looking at the voltage across the resistor and because we're ground referenced these two are going to one's going to be a plus voltage and one's going to be a minus voltage so on the oscilloscope I've inverted one of them okay and so I've inverted the blue trace this one so we're measuring positive voltage and positive voltage now so let's take a look at the trace. You've seen things, something like this before. So the uh, blue trace is voltage and the yellow trace is current. So current leads voltage. Eli the ice man, we're talking about ice, current leads voltage. So current leads voltage and by about 90 degrees, which is an ideal capacitor, 90 degrees. So everything looks reasonable for a capacitor. So what information do we have here? We have a voltage, a current, and a phase. And those three numbers, voltage, current, and phase across the capacitor is all you need to calculate its capacitance value. Those three numbers. So that's the way these vector voltmeter LCR meters work. They create a vector, current, voltage, angle, and they do mathematics and they can calculate everything from there. So let's do the same experiment. Uh, this time we're gonna do it with an inductor. So let's remove all of this stuff. And where's my inductor? Here we go. So here's an inductor and a resistor. So again, let's put the um, function generator across the whole thing. We'll ground reference in the center. We'll measure the current and measure the voltage. And there we go. So now we've got, um, voltage, which is blue, leading current, which is the yellow. And the angle is funny. It's not a 90 degree angle. It's 90. It's, it's different than 90, right? So there's an, 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 an error between the ideal inductance and the real inductance, and that's due to its capturing energy with magnetic fields and stuff. But um, you'll see that by having those three numbers again, you can you can calculate anything about this inductor. All right, so let's uh, let's measure these with the actual um, machine itself. Okay, so let me let me clean up here and get rid of all these things. All right, so let's put our our device here. I think I think that's probably okay. Let me. We really just care about the display here. Well, no, we don't. Let's see, let's back out a little bit then. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so let's turn it on. Let's measure the capacitor first. Put it over here so it won't wander around. Uh, so we're gonna measure the capacitor and 
100 nanofarads. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to change the mode here. So instead of being auto mode, I fixed it to capacitor mode. And so now uh, we have a second display. So what's that second display? This is D, oops, ESR, theta, D, and Q. So what are, the, what are those things? Well, I think we understand uh, theta because we saw that on the oscilloscope. It was around 90 degrees and it was negative because it's a capacitor. So that makes sense. About a 90 degrees phase shift between current and voltage. Okay, so that's that. Um, if you know theta, all right, so now we need to do a little mathematics. So if you know theta, which is 89.7, okay, and you know 90, and you subtract those two, uh, you get a uh, angle difference of 0.3 degrees, okay? from ideal to, to actual is about, about 0.3 degrees, okay? So, in fact, it's 89.7. So 89.7, 90, it's 0.3. Okay, that's right, 0.3. Now we're gonna take the tangent of that number and we're gonna get 0, 0, 002. And D is 0, 0, 003. Well, it should be 0025 mathematically. There's gonna be some rounding errors inside the machine, but it's just the tangent of that angle. And then if we take this number and we invert it, take one over that number, we get 190. We get 254 over here. Okay, so let's do, let's go backwards on the machine then. 254, they say, is the uh, Q value. We'll take one over that and we get 0 0.0039. And our D value was 0 0.003, so it's actually 0 0.0039. And then if we take the arc tangent of that, we get 0 0.22. And if we subtract that from 90, we get 89.7, which is what we had, 89.7. So that's how those three numbers are related. Uh, D and Q are reciprocals of one another. And theta is the angle that you measure. And then if you take the, the, the difference between 90 degrees and theta, and you take the tangent, that's D. So that's why these are all the same button. D, Q, and theta, it's just all the same value. Uh, you can also express effective series resistance, which is uh, what it thinks is a uh, the series resistance in this particular thing. We're doing a series model. That's a different story, but anyway, about six degrees for this particular capacitor. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing, this time with the inductor. The inductor on here. All right. So the inductor says it's, um, put it in inductor mode. Inductor says it's 9.38 mega, uh, milli, millihenries. I think it's, it's marked as 10, but Close enough. Okay, so once again, we have a theta. Remember the theta that we saw was a bit funny. It wasn't around 90, it was something else. Uh, let's see here, I got it, oops. There we go, theta. So it's 40, 40 degrees. Well, that's very different than 90, 40, okay? So let's do some math, uh, 40.2, if we subtract that from 90, uh, we get 49.8. That's our delta. And if we take tangent, that's 1.18. Let's look at our D value here, 1.179, okay? So that's our D value, and then we'll take one over that. We get about 0.845, that should be our Q. 0.8, so there you go. So again, D and Q are reciprocals, and then the theta is tangent of the difference. All right, or D is the tangent. D is the tangent of the angle difference from 90. So there you go. Uh, so that's how these things work. Um, they are, I would call them a vector voltmeter. Um, they measure current, they measure voltage, they measure angle, phase angle, and then they do mathematics and they do all that stuff for you. 
and um, they're pretty inexpensive these days. It used to be in the old days, these were really, really expensive, you know, multi-thousand dollars, but I think you can get these for, I'm, I'm guessing, I haven't shopped for one lately, but maybe $150, maybe even cheaper than that now. Uh, a bunch of companies make them. I think they're all the same. Um, the accuracy of these things are about 0.5% to 2%, depending on the range. Um, so they're very, very good. Um, yeah, there's uh, more to be learned. Uh, get yourself uh, some books. Read up on reactants of an, and uh, uh, phase angles and cues and ESRs and stuff like that. You'll see all of the formulas and you'll see the difference between a series model and a parallel model. Um, and if you're not sure whether you should be using a series model or a parallel model, uh, read the user guide for your particular unit. This one basically says um, for a, um, let's see, how's that work? For an inductor, you want to use the series model if the resistance is lower than 100 ohms and it's the opposite if it's greater than 100 ohms and then capacitors that are the opposite of that. So you really need to read the book and figure it out. So what, am I, what do I mean by models? So, uh, uh, you know, a capacitor can have a series resistance, it could have a series inductance, it could have another capacitance, it could, it could have a resistor, and it could have all kinds of stuff in real life. And that's too complicated. So you can model them two ways. You can just say, okay, my capacitor is just a resistor in series with a capacitor, or my capacitor is uh, has a parallel resistor. So this is the parallel model, this is the series model, and by having the three numbers, you calculate this value and you calculate this value. Um, you calculate this value and you calculate this value. And these will be marked as series and these will be marked as parallel. And um, same thing for inductors. So this is probably too confusing. It, 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 it's confusing me for, for me to try to teach it. Um, so really read, read up on this in books if you really care. Um, this, is, this is more of a book learning exercise than I want to get into. Um, but they, uh, but they, do, uh, they do have two different types of models. And one is more accurate, like I said, one is more accurate than the other depending on the values of these things. Uh, since this thing is so complicated, sometimes it, this one's a little closer to the actual, and sometimes this one's a little closer to the actual.